the time has come that I must decrease that you might increase. I want to do something prophetic in bridging the gap between one generation and another generation. Bring me the sword. And now you're standing on the stage of woman thou art loose. As I pass the baton, this is a divine assignment. The greater intercessor ever lives to make intercession for you to fulfill your mandate. Tonight I want to hand you over a sword which is a symbol of authority in the spirit. Whenever you lift up this sword, let heaven respond. And let heaven respond by lightnings, by thunder, by earthquake, by fire, and by mercy. But keep watching because it will make sense shortly once we connect all the dots. My father was a Freemason and he was a grand wizard for the Freemason. And my dad had a snake in the house we're living in and he communicates with the snake. If I did not know that the hand of the Lord was on you, I would never do this. I so anoint you. And with every drop of oil that falls upon your head, may the strength and the power of the Almighty God rest upon you, rest upon your life. I hand you over this on. Let it breach the gap between my generation and your generation. I will take my coat off my body and I will cover you because it's going to get cold. And I believe that you are made of the stuff that it takes to step into your destiny and still let her step into hers. And I embrace you as my son. Your hands are lifted as the sword is lifted. The sword of God's deliverance be lifted over your lives and your situation. Today we decree, let the sword of the Lord make a difference in your life. Most of us in the United States, or even those in Africa, probably have never heard about Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, the Archbishop and General Overseer of the Action Chapel International Ministry. Interestingly, this man wields enormous power within the Pentecostal and Charismatic movement. And why are these false teachers so successful at what they do? Be because they're in cahoots with the devil. Why is Satan successful? Because his temptations, although they might appear noble on the outside, are in perfect accord with all the fallen, corrupt, selfish, proud, evil desires of sinners. He is so famous that Paula White, the spiritual advisor to former U.S. President Donald Trump, considers him a spiritual father. He has raised thousands of spiritual sons and daughters globally. Everything that pertained to my eternal destiny, the original intention of God, has now come into my life in divine alignment. And that all happened as a result of my covenant connection and relationship to Archbishop, to Papa. Although some people see a peer-to-peer, -peer, I see um, my life would have been probably destroyed, my purpose, by the plan of the enemy, had Archbishop, my Papa, not stood in place. Please help us spread biblical truth. Subscribe, like, and share. God bless you. In 2017, T.D. Jakes preached at the Africa Business and Kingdom Leadership Summit hosted in Ghana by Nicholas Duncan Williams. Nicholas is so famous that he dedicated Bishop T.D. Jakes Potter's house. 
That's how influential this man is. When Bishop T.D. Jakes invited me to dedicate the potter's house, that was the most difficult time in my life. Sitting there was the vice president of the United States, and every big shot in the Christian community was sitting there. Up to today, every invitation I've had for all major churches in America came from that seven minutes prayer. Stand by that which was determined in eternity in the archives before time to declare the prophetic word. Now, Satan, hear ye the word of the Lord. He will run his race. He will finish his course. These false preachers are not hiding it anymore. They are no longer hiding who they really serve and worship. Take a closer look at this mitre Archbishop Duncan Williams wore. We won't be shocked if this man is a Catholic Jesuit masquerading as a Christian pastor. Who else wears this type of mitre? Ah, Pope Francis. Keep watching because it will get even more fascinating. Nicholas Duncan William appears to have been exposed to demonic forces at a young age before his alleged encounter with Jesus, resulting in the loss of three fingers. So I started having all these hallucinations, hearing voices, and one time I was in my room and I had voices and began to sense the presence of evil. And then a voice said to me, in those days we didn't have standby generators and any of those things. So when your light went off, you, you lighted a candle. So I had a candle and a match uh, in my room. So the voice said, light the candle. I did. And he said, place your right palm on the flame. And uh, it didn't make sense, but it was as if I could not resist the power of the voice. And so I placed my right palm on the flame and that is the result of this. I could see the flesh, you know, opening up and the bones popping out and blood was all over the place. My lips were sealed, um, but I couldn't resist the command. And my hand was on the flame and my hands was roasting on the fire. Obviously, after his alleged encounter with Jesus Christ, he learned about a famous preacher in Nigeria who claimed to have raised the dead, and Archbishop Duncan Williams wanted to have the same power and anointing that Benson Idahosa had. The reborn Nicholas proceeded to study in a Bible school under the great Benson Idahosa in Nigeria, where he learned a great deal. He was phenomenal. I haven't seen anybody preach the gospel with that kind of power and charisma and audacity and I said whoa this is what I want I want some of what this guy has and then the Lord said yes you can have it go see and he'll tell you what to do and I said me what kind of anointing did Benson Idahosa have that Mr. Duncan Williams so desperately desired? Was this anointing indeed from God, or did it come from somewhere else? And my pastor stood up one day, Benny, and he said, Jesus said, Cast out devil, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. I took my bicycle, and I took my Bible, and I went from street to street. Is anybody dead here? Do you have anybody dead here? Do you have anybody dead here? Anyone died here? And somebody said, what are you looking for the dead for? My pastor told me to raise them up. From house to house. Is anybody dead? They said no. Is anybody dead? No. From 11 o'clock in the morning. Half past four in the afternoon. I got to a house where somebody finally died. Everybody say hallelujah. I said, do you have anybody there? They say, here is one. They say, what do you want to do with him or her? I said, I've come to raise the dead from the dead. They say, here you are with one. And I read. He said unto her, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. So I said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up right now in Jesus' name. And in five seconds, Hallelujah. everybody say five seconds. 
The girl sneezed. She sneezed and rose up. Shout hallelujah. There was a, an event in, in Zambia and a big, you know, crusade that happened. It's a miracle crusade that happened. You better believe the topic was not the gospel. The topic was not, you know, come and have your sins forgiven. Come and repent and believe. No, come get your blessing. Come get your miracle. Come get your deliverance. And the list goes on and on. These are the things that thousands flock to. Watch him raise a dead woman back to life and judge for yourself whether he operated under the power of God or not. Well, the supposed dead woman didn't wake, so he resorted to option two, a sprinkling of holy water. That sounds like Nana Poku's holy water. Listen to me as we are coming. You are coming to get this miracle water. My God, power upon power is taking place. What is the purpose of this miracle water? Prophet Nana Poku is going to use this miracle water to wash your feet. You can throw the name of Jesus around all you want. You can sing it 50 times in one song. It's coming. It's coming. And like the charismatics Jesus must have had in mind in the future, including today, they think the proof that they are His is in their prophecies, their exorcisms, and their miracles. Did they really do them? Of course not. Of course not. You have to debate that? The Lord says, I don't even know you. He doesn't empower people who aren't even in His kingdom to do miracles to cast out Satan or, or to reveal his truth through prophecy. These are fake claims, false claims. Next time you see fake charlatans like Alf Lukau raise the dead, you probably know who laid the groundwork for this deception. <laughs> Anyone who thinks we're criticizing fake preachers or touching God's anointed should remember that Archbishop Duncan Williams who received his anointing from Benson Ida Hosa, not God. When you are dealing with this man, you are dealing with a dangerous man. This is not banana leaf. That's a man of God. Don't deal with them as you are dealing with worldly people. When you touch them, you are touching the anointed. It's a covenant I have from God. If you touch me, you finish. Really? These false prophets are on an ego trip. We are not sure who learned from who, but Benny Hinn must have learned how to curse people who disagree with him from this man. These false preachers use fear tactics to silence their critics. I place a curse on every man and every woman that will stretch his hand against this anointing. I curse that man who dares to speak a word against this ministry. This is the Holy Ghost on me telling me to do this. Watch how the late Benson laid his hands on Benny Hinn, thus transferring his anointing to Mr. Hinn. If you have nothing good to say, shut your mouth! <laughs> Father, from today I put the anointing in the hand of God. In Jesus' name, we decree that any hand that stretched to this life that is wrong to cause destruction and death shall not succeed. But your mouth shall be the flame of fire. What you bind on earth is bound in heaven. What you lose on earth is lost in heaven. In the name of Jesus, you have the anointing that no one shall touch you and go free. In Jesus' name, amen. For certain people have crept in unnoticed. They have titles. Bishop, apostle, they crept in unnoticed. How do you recognize them? Ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only master and Lord Jesus Christ. They pervert the gospel and misrepresent Jesus. 
That's as simple as I can put it. And they must be contended with. They must be refuted. They must be exposed. Why? Because if you pervert the gospel and misrepresent Jesus, you undermine salvation. For well-meaning Christians who would criticize us for stating that Mr. Hinn or Idahosa lacked God's anointing, consider how Mr. Hinn claimed to have seen a dead man resurrected during his crusade, but then denied it when confronted. And a man was raised from the dead on the platform. That's a fact. I was in Ghana recently, preaching one night. They brought a man. And this man was put uh, uh, on the platform, and he was dead. The man was dead. And uh, it was a very scary thing. Now, I saw his body being picked up you know, from hand to hand to put him on the stage. Behind my back, the man was getting up and moving. Oh, my, oh, my. Do you literally believe that someone has been resurrected on the program? I have not seen it. In that one case, we did hear about it. Folks, what you see here is a generation of fraudulent preachers who have not only distorted the gospel of Jesus Christ, but have also misrepresented Christ and mischaracterized Christianity. These people need your urgent prayers, because they are in danger of going to hell if they don't repent. 